There he is. Sven Stoffels, welcome back to the kill stream, sir. Ethan Ralph, thanks you so much for having me back on the kill stream. It's Still great. Number one in the sector, I hear. Yeah, you know, we're always the most influential. Thanks for having me sector. back, dude. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you being here. Uh, Hell and yeah, gonna, bro. I was going to get you on, I don't know, I guess it was a couple weeks ago now, but I've my schedule's been so fucked and I just now got consistent again. Uh, so it's good to have you back on. And I saw that Ethan Klein mm. struck down your video oh. uh, as well. Oh, and I was oh, like, oh, oh. fuck, I got to touch base with Sven again and get him back on for sure now. Uh, and you launched Tell me about Kill it. again as well. But what happened with Ethan Klein? True. Lots of stuff happened. I mean, my, I'm kind of in a shitty mood because just before we went live, I got a message from Facebook as well. Your page is being scheduled for termination because wow. of violations of all these violations that I'm always being guilty of, it seems. But yes, I made a, sat a satirical cartoon. Everybody's seen it at this point. Yeah. The Ela Klein, the famous, the infamous Ela Klein cartoon where she, uh, you know, it's a cartoon. It's funny, right? And she is uh, murdering some kids in it. Satire. That's what satire is. It's making fun of like an uncomfortable thing. So it is, and even YouTube agreed. I think you showed the video, right? Yeah. YouTube said, YouTube themselves said, no, we cannot get rid of this. This is valuable artistic expression, I believe is what YouTube said. And then of course, Ethan Klein resorted to underhanded tactics by getting his hounds involved and doing some mass reporting and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that cartoon is, uh, is gone now. And that's where we are at right now. That's and then, good. Well, go ahead. Finish yeah, your thought. Go ahead. No, finish your thought. Well, uh, to me, it's like it fucking sucks. I'm sick. Like a lot of you hear a lot of these guys, a lot of comedians, a lot of artists, they complain about being shadow banned and canceled. Yeah. I'm the real deal. I've been fucked with so many times to the point where I'm verging on it's like traumatic almost. Like I've lost my shit, build it back up, and then lost it again Dignity so many times. I'm sick of it. Wait, are people First just time talking over me right sure, now? Yeah, it's great. talking over you deserve uh, frick down with some my clients <laughs> it only came out then go, <laughs> go ahead and I'll, I'll read that out myself go ahead all right right uh well but you're actually canceled yeah, well just... i know how it goes thank god for rumble uh i'll say that because i'm not allowed on youtube thank god for twitter somehow I managed to stay on there even even before elon got it um you know yeah. there are a few outlets and we're blessed enough to have um yeah a lot of payment processors and stuff like that now but that has, hasn't always been the case i remember um what was it 2021 and we had to go to trovo and they were taking 50 percent cut and the site sucked anyway and there was no other options like uh so it is kind of a little bit of a golden era but that that cloud always remains and people take advantage of events like what's going on in gaza this cartoon's been up years uh, and i want to ask yeah you for that. seven years seven years it's been up right yeah so yeah that's and the shit that i've been dealing with like there's a couple of it, like um levels to this so one of it is a cartoon was up seven years for seven years no fucking problem and then now all of a sudden, because of the flux of the times and the changing of history, this cartoon that I made seven years ago gets reinterpreted, right? And uh, I get fucked with all over again. My shit gets fucked with. So what I was about to say is, yeah, I was just about to launch my uh, comic book, Butch Killigan. Butch Killigan! Mega, took on China. mega and based, and everybody should check out. Godspeed. Everybody should get their fucking copy today. You gotta get a oh, copy. Really? It'll piss off Hila, Hila Klein for one. She may have PTSD over these incidents in Israel. Like we, we don't know where she might snap and go next. I saw her Halloween costume. Exactly. She looks a little spooky lately. Um, she looks. She's always looked fucking out of whack. At this fucking Shylock. Anyways, fucking sick of these people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, but here's the problem. Here's the problem, dude. Like now I'm being used as like a spearhead against the Kleins. So it's like, okay, is that what I sign up for? Every time I make a piece of art, now I basically sign up to be, I'm on call 24 seven in perpetuity to become the spearhead against some kind of client. You know what I'm saying? It's not what I signed up for when I made a cartoon seven years ago. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And now my shit's getting fucked with for well, no maybe reason. Maybe she shouldn't have joined the IDF if she didn't want cartoons made about her like that. I don't so, know what to say. So, so that's the rumor right now. The reason they are so upset about it, and but I need to explain. Oh, I've I've said this many times, right? But I think always you need to explain the difference between a piece of art because I'm just a silly little artist boy. I make some art, you know what I'm saying? Might be edgy, you might hate it, you might love it. But there's two distinct spheres. There's the artistic sphere. And there's the politics sphere. Those are distinctly separate. Okay, and anything should go in the artistic hyperbolic comedy art sphere 
We should be able to explore our deepest underbelly, psychopathic, most crazy things should be explored there precisely so that they don't have to be acted out in this concrete political realm. And that is why banning satire is actually very, very fucking stupid on these people's parts because the more they silence stuff like this, the more it might come to actual fruition. And, you know, you might be have to... You right. might be hiding under the floorboard soon. Wink. It's just a joke. I would never say something like that. Jake, let's see. Jake Nestaken says, first time listener. Show you need to eat. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing that. <laughs> my transition. <laughs> you need to laugh when I say something so Well, I know so to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you need to laugh no, really hard right. when I say hide under the floorboards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get in well, trouble now. I hear That's it pretty often guy. on the kill stream. So. <laughs> I, I love everybody. All right, keep going. I do too. Now, Jake, Jake Mistaken says, first time listener show is great. You deserve it. Down with the schemy clients, them schemy clients. And then SE311 says, Sven took on China and now he's taking on Israel. Godspeed. Uh, I'm not. I'm not, I'm, not on, I'm not taking on anybody, guys. Please let me, leave me out of this mess. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's my thing. I mean, clearly Ethan Klein and his bitch wife wanted this taken down for a while and used this as mm -hmm. an excuse to do so. So that's my thing about it being taken down. Well, it was up for seven years, right? So I uh, hear, I hear, I hear. Of, of course, so the, the spotlight's on them right now with all this Gaza Strip stuff happening, and then I hear people actually checked out uh, um, Ela Klein's pictures of when she was in the idf because she was in the idf she, she always claimed she was a secretary but then they no. checked her patches and her ranks turns out there might be a little bit more truth to the silly cartoon that i made than they let on and by the way here's the thing i don't give a fucking flying fuck about them again i don't want to be the spearhead of this movement against the clients okay i just made a cartoon i'm a little silly boy don't don't use me for this but you go ahead yeah, what do people. you think some of some of the clients i assume are good people um mm. i don't know about these two though uh and <laughs> it is funny i mean i don't know it was up for seven years okay all this shit happens in gaza and israel and now it's like oh we got to get this taken down and you two mm -hmm. even agreed with you and then all of a sudden they they didn't so what did what events on the ground just changed i don't know it's ridiculous i think i think i think you know if you're an elitist type of guy you have a lot more strings to pull behind the scenes at YouTube. And even if YouTube has certain policies, you can circumvent those. Like, I don't have any power. I don't have any institutional power. Again, I'm just a little... The only voice I have is my artistic voice, which gets stifled all the time, all the time, trampled on, destroyed, silenced. Now, you have a chance to amplify my little voice once again by but by backing Butch Killian. Now, speak Thank about you. Butch Killian for a minute before I forget. Now, what what's going on with that? We talked about it last How time. How could we you here. forget? Well, I wouldn't How could forget. You forget? I'm, a, I'm a pro. I don't forget. But uh, I just said Hell that yeah. for benefit of the audience. I don't know. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, but what's it about? What's going on? Butch, maybe let the art speak for itself. Yeah, maybe you can pull up one of the trails. I send you a trail, yeah, the good. punch in the face trailers, maybe you're going to just get people gone. And there's also that, that one. We've played it before on this very stream, the chapter one uh, thing that gets people like they get a little sense of what the story is. This is mega based, epic, masculine punch to the to your face action you know what i'm saying they right, need now, to get it now i'll pull that up you won't be able to hear it but uh, what do you think of either man skyver he's coming on soon too um do you, do you um, know if his work just say i'm going to be completely know. on i do i do i know his work on the jordan peterson books but here's the thing i'm not very familiar with all the goings-ons in the comic sphere i'm very much an outsider i'm very much doing my own thing there's not a reaction to anything it's just it's my own very much my own uh little project that i've been working on for we have to get him to promote to it too years. he makes a shit ton of money uh i think he could get some of these comics gates people comics gates comic gate people in on it maybe um but yeah I don't, i'm I don't a know. gay comic gate. if he has any not comic if gay. he has any sense if he has any sense and an eye for quality he would he right. would he would well he it. does that's what i'm saying all right now I think, let me i think he follows me on the twitter oh but okay see he already knows about you okay um i'd hope so now <laughs> <laughs> I certainly <laughs> hope so. If he's a man of taste, then he already knows. Okay, now uh, let me pull this up, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, okay. <laughs> Watch this sure. fucking trailer. It rules. All right. And I'll let this play too. Who would win? Okay. North 3434. Not that audio. On Rumble. Who good. would win in a fight, Isom or Butch Killigan? Who would win in a fight, Isom or Butch Killigan? I don't know if you're.
familiar with Isom. Uh, I've caught up a little bit. I know what I'm definitely Butch, but he might be convicted of a hate crime. <laughs> Man, okay, so Dick Masterson's supposed to be popping in here in a bit. I, hopefully, he he gets in on time because I I, I I figured we might go into that. If you if you're read up on it, then we definitely will. I I know a little bit of it, not all of it, but okay. I've I've read up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, he'll explain it. <laughs> a lot of it. type of stuff. You know, a lot of yeah, it's hard. Stuff. It's a little. <laughs> Yeah. It's tough to you know to keep to, to listen. You'd have to listen for hours and hours, but all the ebonics, dude, it's gets a, a little gets to be a little much. Black exploitation. We yeah, play. So be talking like this right now. <laughs> Just to celebrate. Apparently, that's what fucking sells a comic book these days. Being a token fucking type of nigga. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer right. quality that counts. Rumble's gonna take this down. All right, now let's. <laughs> No, no, no. I said nigga. You know? Yeah, it was soft. Eh? It was I'll say like. hard R if you want no, me no, to. No, no, drop, no, 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 no
now it's coming soon. Now, when is the comic supposed to release? And I'll switch back over. So it's, it is released. This is an older oh. video. It's right now. It's out right now. Guys, in the chat, can you post a link to the Kickstarter? Now, so you can buy the copy now, though. Is what, is what you saying. can buy it right now on Kickstarter. It's out right now. We've released uh, for a week now. Sadly, I haven't been able to do my full promotion because, of course, I've been canceled and banned by the clients. But it's despite that, it's been doing really, really well. I do want to reiterate real quick, like Butch Killing is not an ISOM. We I don't take myself too seriously. Butch Killing is very much a comedy action type of deal. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, wait, who do we got here? Hey, what's up? The, holy I, shit, it's is Eric July here? Did I just miss him? <laughs> I heard him I heard him gibbering and jabbering and indecipherable abonics. I thought that was him stopping by to promote. Uh, Alpha Corpse or whatever it was. He's here in spirit, yeah. He took me over for a little bit. I, could, I couldn't speak. It might be the booze, though. <laughs> he stole your body? Oh, man. Yeah, it happens a lot to me. Really playing to those stereotypes, isn't he? How you doing? Oh, is it? I'm doing really well. How are you doing, my brother? Dick I'm Maston, awesome. nice to meet you, dude. We were talking a little bit on chat, but maybe we one day I can make the... it on. Yeah. Then the dick pics started flying, and we're like, "All right, we gotta cool off a little bit here." <laughs> oh, frick. A little space. <laughs> oh. Uh, it ha shit happens, you know. Now he was he was talking about he knows a little bit about Ison, but he, he said he didn't know the whole deal, and you just happened to come in here right at the right time. Uh, what do you, what do you know about Ison? Um, Are you asking me? I know me? he oh. has. Yeah. I know he has the power to get sued. He does. That's his superpower, apparently, that was unrevealed in the first book. Uh, I seem to have that job, superpower, man. too, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, <laughs> you have any tips for him? You're blacker than I saw him, to tell you the truth. If I, if I have the picture of black guy in my head, I'm picturing Ralph, not fucking Eric July. I ah, mean, I'm from Memphis, yeah. so honorary, honorary black man. Uh, yeah. A little, little wedlock nice. action going on there. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, this me. whole uh, Dick Masterson, uh, Eric Juneteenth, niggerverse type of thing is not, you can't really uh, get get away from yeah. it. Yeah. It came across my desk. It's without a hard R. Listen, it came across my desk so many times, I was forced to catch up on it. A buddy of mine in my Discord, he made a whole rundown, like, okay, I've been watching a bunch of these streams it's so fucking funny dude like i'm telling you it's so fucking funny it's great man it's making me feel like i'm 20 again just running <laughs> laps around these jackasses that'll that'll sell their audience like <laughs> the most tepid warmed over tokenized shit just to prove they have a black friend it's such a fucking joke yeah i don't know if you tuned if you were listening earlier i, I had an idea for a for a charity but i don't think we should repeat that one uh, listen back to the replay listen oh, back to the replay there's the well African well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to sell a comic book. My comic book doesn't have any black people wells in there. <laughs> You're going to push all the thirsty kids in, right? <laughs> well, yeah, they're the ones are going to be lining up. <laughs> oh, fucking shit. Ralph, how have you been, man? You're like oh, half the man you used to be, That's literally. True. What the fuck? Yeah, look look amazing. Man. Lost a lot of weight. Thank you for that. I've been doing good. Mexico treating me well. Uh, yeah. I haven't I haven't shared everything, but it's been a good it's been a good few weeks, I have to say. Uh, and it's looking up, you know, I had a crazy year. As I as most of my years are pretty crazy, actually. Uh, now that no I think shit. about it, but uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And I uh, posted some of those pics. I think some people thought I was lying uh, about the weight loss until a couple of those pictures came out. And then Gator tried to say that I photoshopped one, and I forgot to photoshop my shadow, which I didn't do either one oh, of those God, things. Right. Um, the shadow's just a normal shadow. But uh, SC311, did, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. With did what did Gator say. have his pants on while he was <laughs> inspecting your, your picture for Photoshop? Or what? Yeah, Why it's is a little that guy still around? I, I like I hate to I hate to make fun of Gator, but come on, man! You were like you were the you were the number two on the biggest show in the world, and now you, you went all the way from the major leagues down to like adult recreational leagues, like co-ed leagues, like, like intermural. Stop, yeah, it's it's bad. Yeah, JB. come on. And he seems to be upset. You know what? You brought it up, but he seems to be obsessed with you too. And I don't, I can't think of a reason why he hates on you except. That we're cool. Like I really can't think of another reason. Uh, but yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. I, every time I see him talk about me, I'm like, "What are you? What is your problem? Like, what are you? What are you doing, Gator? Come on." I don't know. He he's got to have something. Um, you know the the 
children's animations only go so far. SE three one one says, "Dick, can you get Sven on Biggest Problem? He and Vito could nerd out about comics while you rage." That's what he said. Uh, I gotta yeah, disappoint you, gotta... you. I gotta disappoint you. As much as I draw comics, I don't really know much about comic books, guys. I'm sorry about that. I grew up with uh, Amsterdam Comics. Have you guys ever heard of Joop Klapsaker? No. No, nah, you suck. So. <laughs> it's about a, it's about like, a guy. Leanne Leif Reifenstahl? Is that like part of the third Reich? Oh, no. Like no, 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 <laughs> no. Power I'll the world type shit here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what is it? <laughs> Yope, clap second. Is that the comic books I grew up with as a little kid in Amsterdam, for you guys who don't know, I'm from Amsterdam. Just a lot of kids and pussy and cocks and it was just <laughs> smut, you know, it's smut, which might explain my, you know, cartoon tastes nowadays. I'm always shocked by how timid certain subsets of the American audience are by something that over here is just like, all right, it's, it's not even that bad, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of fucking uh, cook, cookie cutter over here. Like can the Eli Klein cartoon. Can you spell it? I want to look up the all the cops okay, that you're talking about. All right, all right. So the comic book is an Amsterdam comic book by Eric Schurz. Rest in peace. He died probably off of alcoholism. The same fate I'll meet one day soon. <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, Joop Klapsaker, J. O O P space K L E P Z E I K E R. Okay. Yo, clap Zyker. And it's oh, ridiculous. Wow, okay. It's basically, it was ahead of it that it's times because it's about this schlubby loser incel basically trying to have sex and nobody will give it to him. So he goes to some prostitutes. It's a lot of cocks and dicks and tits and murder. And it's just, it's, it's the most degenerate. Uh, Non Tradcath, a comic you'd ever. Did Gator imagine. star in this comic too? Speaking of Gator, I don't know. It sounds kind of like him. Uh, l <laughs> let me pull this up on screen, by the way. I'll show. Is this what you're talking about? Let me see. Oh, Gator. Poor Gator. All right, now that remember the good. Puerto Rican girlfriend? Oh my God, that's like one of the all-time <laughs> clips. Oh yeah, my God. <laughs> I felt the same way then that I do now. Like, oh, man, just stop doing what you're doing. Come on. What are you doing? You can hear it in your voice too. And I'm, I'm like not saying anything because I know how bad he's getting exposed. And at the end, I just, I forget what I said, but I, I don't know. It was hilarious. We we're both drunk too. So, uh, now here goes. Is this the guy? Sven? Yeah, that's the one. That's Yob Klapsaker. That's only issue two. It gets progressively more degenerate and disgusting. But as you can see, his dog has a little condom on his nose. <laughs> if you could look at some of the pages, it really gets really hardcore. Also with like the, like I would, whenever I would draw a black person, I'd give him like little round lips because it's cute. You know, it, over here, it's not a problem. Over there it is. Like we have uh, guys like Black Pete. I'm sure you guys must have heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean the little doll? That? It's, it's like a little doll that they have. Isn't it around Christmas uh, or some shit? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah it's, it's coming up right now. Black yeah, yeah. Pete. Type it in. Black Pete. He's like, sure, uh, sure. he's one of our mythical figures in my country where everybody dresses up in blackface. That's right, yeah. And, uh, you know, but, you know, here's the problem with Americans, right? As much as you love to spread sodomy across the, the globe, you also are very critical of other people's cultures and you project your own misdeeds like slavery and blackface onto us, even though what we're doing is very innocent. It's like a very, we, Black Pete was this, I loved Black Pete. He was a really good guy, you know what I'm saying? Had nothing to do with minstrel shows or whippings or any of that type of stuff. Do they still do it? Do they still do the whole Black Pete celebration? They're trying to get rid of it since, like, you know, everything's so changed since 2015, 2016. Trayvon <laughs> Martin touched our hearts as much as it did yours. His death. Oh, His yeah. tragic death. Black Pete. This looks like a really nice guy. I would let him. I would let him borrow my bike. <laughs> he's, he's so black. He's all the way around the other side. He looks pretty friendly. Can you pull him up? Yeah, he's yeah, friendly, I can pull him guy. up. I know about this a little bit. Uh, if you don't pull it up, it seems like I'm having like some delusional <laughs> episode. But it's really true. It's uh, uh Swart Swarte Piet. How do you say that? Yeah, Zwart Zwarte Piet. Zwarte Piet. That's the guy. Uh, yeah, but they are changing him up. The funny thing is they made him into rainbow colors instead of like the black uniform face. They would have every black Pete have a different rainbow color face and children were madly afraid of it. They, it would it didn't register. Yeah, there it is. That's our little uh, cultural heritage. I wonder if we could get Ricardo to dress as black Pete for the for the Christmas show. I don't know. Maybe we could introduce some European uh, traditions uh, here. It's not just Dutch, though. Don't they have this in England too, or some other countries? It's kind of spread to. There's a there's a lot of different countries in the in the European Peninsula, which is a new word I'm using. I don't know if it's accurate, but 
where they where they do this type of thing and it is um a rebirth ritual that originated somewhere in scandinavia where they would do like a yule tide fire and then they would smear the ashes on their faces and then it got sort of different it morphed into different characters amongst different european nations and yeah in our case like it's, it has something to do with like yeah 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 so but we have like sinterklaas which is what santa claus came from originally uh, which is like the saintly guy uh, and then his little lackeys, not slaves, his lackeys, his friends, were black <laughs> feet. Definitely and, not slaves. Uh, yeah, they had, black, they had black faces. And the reason that, that is, it, it has something with like the Moors and like the Dutch like trade history and stuff like that. It, it's nothing disrespectful, nothing to do with slavery. But of course, that's what gets projected onto it by the dominant culture of our times, which is you guys. Now, speaking Same of the, with the dominant culture, we, we were talking. We were talking about the clients earlier. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, Dick Masterson. Uh, I don't know if you Thanks saw. Thanks for all the butt fucking guys. He. Uh, well, I don't know if they might have introduced that too, but uh, they um, they struck down. Stan. I know. Trust me, I know who introduced it. Trust me, I know who introduced <laughs> oh, it. Oh, they, they struck you down. Like yeah. a little Palestinian boy. That's, That's right. terrible. He was throwing yeah, dogs. Did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like dramatic irony. I drew some Palestinian boys getting massacred. And then, ergo, I got struck down. Yeah, do you know that cartoon, Dick? Um, the one of Hila no, Klein. I haven't seen it. I heard the... you talking about it. Oh, you got to see it. I know it. Yeah. somebody link it. Cartoons of Hila Klein, though. Oh yeah, you got to see the, it. It's in the Josh thread. It's in the Josh thread. I'm gonna grab another beer. I'll be back okay. In a get second. a beer. Somebody link that in chat. Uh, it might be harder to find now, uh, but it's Hila Klein, bloodthirsty Hila Klein. Um, I think she's got an AK or something, and she's mowing down uh, Palestinian children uh human shields yeah, yeah human, shields, right. human shields. They were that's, terrorists. yeah that's fine yeah yeah they, they were obviously terrorists <laughs> uh this video had been around for like seven years and it's been played uh a lot but then this you know the gaza thing happened israel thing happened and then you know ethan klein and his wife decided they needed to, to strike it down which obviously he was just looking for an opportunity to <laughs> to strike it down right like i mean it's been up for almost a decade now cl getting close to a decade and now this happens like okay we got to scrub this we got to get this taken down uh and youtube refused at first and then he went i guess he went on one of his streams and bitched about it and then they they did strike him down and he just put out butch killian and he can't stream uh and stuff oh, like that too. oh that's that fucking sucks yeah uh i mean it's a compliment though it's 10 years old if he drew her now she'd be a whole lot uglier right Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so that's uh, that's true. That's she, kind of a dumb she should move. be thankful. I mean, all right. Now let me pull this up. You, so you won't be able to hear it. I can put it in the chat though. Maybe you could pull it up too if you want. Uh, but yeah, I think you'll get the flavor uh, even without <laughs> the sounds. Uh, now let's see. Let me pull this up. I guess this is the Odyssey copy, based Odyssey. Hey, coming hey. All right, we're gonna play hey, this because hey. he hasn't seen it, uh, Sven. Uh, he looked Klein. Oh shit. Oh, there. Right in time. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this. You made this? Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I knew you'd seen it. <laughs> it's like, it reminds me of like Deathlock. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I was thinking you had to have seen it. It's been on Twitter a million times, too. So it is she thinking like, like it. it's, it's like uh, for, for Gila, is she, is she like one of those people that's like, I was born too late to be a to be a cowboy, but too early to be an astronaut. But it's like I was born too late to murder Palestinian kids, and I was born too late to murder Palestinian kids. <laughs> Is that like the IDF <laughs> motto? It sure she's seems right to in the be. Worst spot, right? Like if she was if she was any earlier, she could have participated in the last massacre, or any later, she could p participate in this one. That's sad. I'm sure she would have loved to. She has an insatiable thirst. For Palestinian blood, kid blood, cock blood, kid cock blood. They love to shoot off a little kid cock. Now, how did how did the Jesus clients Christ. get on your it's radar not... in the first place? Mine? Yeah. Look, okay, wait. Can we just make this very much clear that I have no vendetta with the clients? <laughs> I'm an artist. I heard this rumor. Yeah, well, you just Klein drew it out of nowhere. Did... Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. No. Here's listen. I, here's, here's the deal. So I heard this rumor about her being in the IDF, and again, satire. Google what satire means. Sure. And it was just like this sort of like this suppressed thing that sort of was fluctuating in the in the culture. And whenever I catch one of those, I'm like, you know what? Let's amplify this a little bit. 
That's it. That's it. That's my role. I amplified it. That does not mean that I'm now going to rally the troops against Israel. What I'm saying, that's not what I sign up for. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, I made a cartoon seven years ago. Now it resurfaced, got reinterpreted and used as some kind of flag against. I was about to say something don't, really bad. Don't. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I think that explanation qualifies uh, you for citizenship in Israel. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I, I decline. So. Uh, I decline. This <laughs> will lead us into battle against the clients and the Zog regime. Now, um, he is our leader. Thank you for that super chat, by the way. Uh, Sven leading us into battle, they said, against the clients. Now, um, oh, fuck. what about... Uh, <laughs> I'd rather visit my mom's grave, and she's still alive, <laughs> than to go to Israel. I knew let's keep going. Now, have they had any reactions to this cartoon before now uh, that you've seen? Because it's been... It has been you. you don't know? I don't know. Which, uh, I bet they have. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about Butch Gilligan, guys? Oh, sure. Please. Be part of the culture war. Back. Yeah, that's Bush how you gotta go. The it's, one is and it only -woke? I only fuck with anti-woke comic books. Here's the thing. It's anti-woke just by the nature of it, because sure. I couldn't create anything woke, but it's not necessarily. I don't make anything as a reaction to anything. This is a, a story in and of itself. Uh, by the way, Dick, I would love it if you could uh, see if it's up to snuff. You review it on your show. Yeah. See if it's shit or not. He's a yeah, world-famous comic book reviewer. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm one, I'm one yeah. for one. One <laughs> devastating review for one. Uh, well, I just have one question. Where would What would Butch Killigan do if he was dropped right on the border of Israel and Gaza? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He would probably... He'd pray for bombs to fall on both sides. <laughs> If Butch is anything like me, he would pray. He would beg, beg for uh, yeah, hellfire to rain on both sides and uh, cleanse our. No, I need to shut my fucking mouth. This is the worst comic book promotion ever. I'm gonna come out like this, looking at more like, like more of an extremist than even than even people thought before. Well, that's a pretty wrong answer, but it could be a lot worse. So. Yeah. That's a wrong answer to destroy both sides. I would uh, North listen, 34, thing, 34 if sent three dollars no, on Rumble. Fuck. Will no. Sven be giving up the so the so the the book say, cancer kids? I was gonna say if you're a little bit browner than me, you deserve to rot in hell. <laughs> now wait a minute. That definitely sounds you're definitely in the line for citizenship. <laughs> Why am I saying these things? Shut up. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm that's not true. I love everybody. I think we're all atomized individuals that ought to live in giant mega cities. And we don't really know each other, but we do love each other equally. That's what I kind of, that's my belief system, I think. I'm, so I'm leaning towards, but then again, I'm a little, just a silly dude, you know? Like some drug, Who cares judge Dredd shit. What was the name of the Judge Dredd City? Uh, Mega it? City one. It was Mega City, wasn't yeah. it? That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. it's Mega yeah. City. Yeah. We but can live Butch... in the Ethan Ralph Tower together. <laughs> in the 100-story <laughs> Ethan Ralph Tower, right next to In Street. Butch <laughs> Killigan, it's called Ultra City. It's called Ultra City and Butch Killigan, okay? That's the reference that we need to be. Ultra City. Okay, right. so I... All right, now let me let me read this. North says, "Will Sven be giving? Will Sven be giving out the pro? <laughs> wait, not the profits, but copies of the book to cancer kids." Yeah, I mean, there's a big there's a big thirst for this amongst cancer kids. Not cures for cancer. Now, like, are these like cancer kids or... black? Is what I need to know. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, they're not getting shit. I'm assuming we can block them up for you. Yeah, they can wear black face yeah, like uh, Black Pete or whatever. Yeah. Give him a school um, trip to Gaza. They'll be covered in soot. <laughs> Black Pete. How do you say that in Dutch again? Say it again in Dutch. Zwarte, Zwarte Pete. I feel this is really getting Zwarte out Pete. of hand. Yeah. Zwarte Pete. <laughs> now, Dick, can you say something really offensive real quick so I'm not the only guy that's just sitting here being a crazy guy? I don't know. I've been pretty good now. All this free Palestine stuff, I find myself on the right side of history all of a sudden. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> you, know you mean I can say whatever I want? This is great. You know what? That is before. really... That's, that's so great. liberating. Listen, uh, yeah, you know what? You're right. I accept that. I, that's that's pretty cool. I don't want to be. Listen, every time I speak, my, my screen sh shows up, and I feel kind of embarrassed about what it's said about <laughs> all these wells and burning children and all that stuff. It's liberating, not for the Palestinians, but for us. Uh, all right, now. <laughs> for us, <though. laughs> uh, how did you think of Butch Killian? Now you said it was a story near and dear to your heart. You know, pr passion project. Um, 
Where did it come from? Daniel, you know what would be pretty cool? If you would pull up the Kickstarter page and scroll that. through it a little bit, I can show you because here's the thing. You can you can buy, and again, this is all finished. You'll, you're basically pre-ordering a book. There's one tier that has the book, Butch Gilligan Volume 1, and the art book. And in the art book, I have a few pages of early concept designs because this has been a story that's been going around in my little, in that little cute brain of mine, a cute, innocent, non-Nazi, uh, very... Uh, innocent guy brain of mine that you shouldn't cancel and it's very innocent that brain that's what this story has been going on around and you can actually kind of find out about uh, uh some of the early concepts started off as a game concept in the beginning if you scroll down a little bit you can see some of that stuff some of the illustration work and shit. Okay. yeah there it is that's the that's the art book you can get in one of the tiers and i would encourage everybody watching right now all the kill streamers the Ralph get in there. All the Ralph Mailer, the Ralph Maniacs, obviously. Go in there, order your copy. Order your copy now. Now listen here, Ralph Mania. All right, I won't do the whole thing. <laughs> uh, what are you waiting for? Now you know okay. something, brother. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, are you kickstarting oh, yeah. it now? Is this a, a crowdfund right now this that's an, happening? This is, an, this is an active crowdfund right now. The reason, you know, I'm trying to do like a press run, a tour because they took the clients, took down my channels because oh, I've been such a naughty boy. Yes, exactly. Directors. Yes, oh, exactly. Yeah. We got to get you yeah. on. Well, come on my show. Um, because uh, I, I don't it. have a YouTube channel, so <laughs> I know, I know what it's like. Uh, I'd love to come on, dude. Let's let's hook it up. Yeah. I'll be there. I'll say the N word on your show too. Awesome. That's two weeks in a row. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you ever need somebody to say the N word on your show, I'm your guy. Now, uh, oh yeah, Lord, Lord Miles was on uh, this. Did weekend. he drop it? Growing. Yeah, he he dropped it once that seemed accidental, and then once just out of nowhere, like uh, like a telephone ringing, like just N word. Like, okay, all right, goodbye, get out of here. Now, while he is a Did known he really? horrible racist, he's a watch known racist. I haven't watched it yet. Holy fuck! Anyway, go ahead. No, that was funny. He was fucking around, but you just never hear that uh, word anymore when you're streaming. It's so rare. That's why we got to bring it back, guys. Am I right? High fives. <laughs> High fives, guys. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I prefer the soft. I, 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 I didn't think it was gonna get these guys uncomfortable. Unless I'm extremely drunk, and I have been on, only about white people, though. I always clarify. Uh, I have said it once or twice about uh, fellow whites, um, but not fellow whites, actual whites. But um, yeah, I still haven't. I still haven't seen that. He's gonna be on the kill stream on Friday, actually, uh, right before delicious great. comes in. Yeah, I'm excited to have him back. Uh, he was in Taliban custody. Maybe that's a thing over, you know, in Afghanistan. Maybe they drop it a little more freely. I heard they um, made him into a Bakabazi boy, and he learned. Now how to wait a minute. I don't. No, I don't think that happened. That's what I heard. I don't know. I might not be accurate. No, I don't. I, I don't. Think <laughs> I don't know what this he guy did is. have kind of a list when he called into my show. That no, might be true. No, wait a minute. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think. I don't think that happened. Who Who in chat knows what they're referring to? Anyway, I do. But uh, let's pull up some Bucket Bozzy stuff. No, you let's know? not. We're let's winding not. down. No, no. A couple of men. Let's just watch some Bucket Bozzy <laughs> stuff. You know, nothing more masculine. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> Maybe Vito to... would like you on our show. That's... <laughs> speaking of language. Oh shit. <laughs> um, now let me ask you this: What all goes into putting out a comic book? Uh, in terms of like the behind the scenes, we've heard Eric July talk about his warehouse and his ninety-nine dollar per month memberships, which you're not offering, yeah. which maybe you need to consider. Um, but what, like, what all goes into a project like this? So what you're saying is all kidding aside, let's get back to the basics here. What what goes into creating a comic? A lot of insane passion for a project. Like what I'm doing is not a throwaway nonsense cash grab. This is literally my dream to create, to, to tell this story. Like I said, it was always an animator. That's my main gig basically. But it's such a tedious line of work because... You do the designs, then you do your storyboards, then you do all the in-between animation and all that shit. It takes so long to get anything out there. But the first step in an animation process is the storyboards. That's basically, if you think about it, a comic book, right? So that's how I'm approaching. It's like the weights have come off. You know when a boxer is training with a bunch of weights on and then he pulls yeah. the weights off and finally, that's what it feels to me to make a comic book. So that's what this is. It's like, finally, I can get this thing out there. It feels so freeing. And the way I'm, I'm just, I love playing with this medium. It's like, if you look at my pages, it's not like, it starts off with panels. 
And then in like page six, I got rid of panels because they were just too restricted. That's a fucking nuts I am, dude. It's a fucking crazy I am. I wouldn't even be fucking uh, confined by a comic book panel. What do you think? Yeah, fuck I'm that. kind of bitch. Yeah, fuck that. All right, that's your. I think it's what's your hands. child? Go ahead. What's your favorite part of your of your comic? <laughs> the favorite part of my comic? Yeah, of your comic. I know what does that mean. I don't really know what that means. With my favorite part of or, or of the creation of or like this I'll first the book. the actual story of the first book. The first book? Okay, so yeah. the first book, it's like the setup of this, it might seem, so I'm going like, I'm. Uh, it's like a, a several genres. Think of like Demolition Man. I think we mentioned that before. Yes. But, Butch movie. Killian is going to wake up in this degenerate psychopathic future at some, this is like at the end of the book, spoiler alert, but he uncovers this psychedelic style contraband and he goes what? into a crazy trip scene. That's my favorite part of this of this book. It's okay, a, Dick, you're gonna love this book. I have to think. Uh. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Dick, literally, I need you to review this, rip it apart if you think. But I think it it, it holds up. I think you're gonna love it, dude. I think everybody's gonna love it. Go get it. It's in the link in the description below, fellas. Yes, and I'll put it in the chat again too. Uh, now, when would they get it if they order it? It's going to be, I think, a couple of months from now. It's not going to be before Christmas, but the second the campaign ends, which is the end of this month, so end of uh, November, that's when uh, when we're going to start. Iconic comics, shout-outs to them. Shout-outs to Timothy Lim, one of the greatest, most creative guys ever. He helped me out so much. Uh, but, yeah, that's when fulfillment starts. So Again, the book, everything's done. We're going to start printing once we know how many books need to be printed, obviously. So we're still taking in all the pre-orders. And then it should be a couple of months. So by January, February, maybe, let's say that. I don't want to get in trouble. So sure. it's probably going to be around there. It's yeah. going to be a couple of months. Yeah, you got to wait and see. Well, you're not it's going to be waiting long. like a year for a lot right. of these fucking... Well, that's yeah, why I asked. I, know, I, know you, I knew that wasn't going to be the case. But uh, I know some people on, on Kickstarter, you know, it can end up being a year or a really long time or whatever. But no, it's already in the can. No. It's already we will never complete. do that. I, and I will never offer anything like... And that's a lot... Even if, as an artist, a lot of people, uh, they fall into this trap. They want to get, they have a good idea and they'll, they'll announce it to the world. They'll get all the applause and all the accolades. And then sort of, it's like, okay, now how am I going to get motivated to do anything? Right. I, I got all my fucking accolades front loaded here. So you should, if you want to be an artist, here's a tip, shut your fucking mouth until you're 95% done. Then you can maybe start talking about your little project. Uh, sure. yeah, that's it. That goes for writing too. Unfortunately, I haven't always followed. <laughs> Follow Any that creative maximum. pursuit. Yeah, yeah. You start talking about project. You can talk a lot, but uh, you got to sit down and actually do it. Uh, and so, yeah, that's a that's good advice for any uh, art, writing, anything really. I mean, shows and stuff too. But uh, now let me see. I I'm trying to think of another question about Butch Killigan uh, here, but mm -hmm. I, I think I hit. What What have I not asked you that you would like to volunteer about the? See, this is a cop out question, by the way. But uh, there evergreen so what <laughs> what what have let i not ask, touched let me, on let me okay let me ask you how many copies did you order well i haven't ordered any yet but uh oh, well then let's pull up Where the page I let's pull it. well i can't order it on screen i've done stuff like that before and uh no, no, let's do it let's show let's lead by example you're from i will order book. you should be behind it let's do it right I will now will order one but not on screen i too much has been uh, revealed no. about me about logging in on screen I, dick dick are you gonna <laughs> dick you're ordering one right he's ordering yeah it right i now. am i'm doing it right now you're at 10 you got the right link? now well, can we drop for the, it can we drop what is it in the chat yeah butch gilligan yeah we've been talking right. about it for like an hour dude you should know by now what it is well what is it like book dot comic or what dot dot community what? oh you oh, oh wait you can go to butch dot com and then you can just click the kickstarter link and there is also an indiegogo link for the variant cover if you really? so wish okay. yeah yeah that now one's gonna be a collector's item. what is this variant thing i, I see if you go to like okay four how, how about variant covers. Uh, how about this, Ethan? Pull up butchkilligan.com and you can just see I made a beautiful little graphic on the main page and it'll, it'll illustrate exactly that your question. Handy. That seems pretty handy, I have to say. Uh, butchkilligan.com. Freaking handy. Okay. See, I can't even. My autocomplete fucks me over, too. I had to pull that off screen. All right. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. So you got on the left, you got your Kickstarter version. That's that cover. On your right, you got your Indiegogo version. That's that cover. Now, by the looks of it, the Indiegogo one is going to be rarer. So if you're planning to sell your copy afterwards on eBay and you're looking to invest, 
that will be your best option. Uh, but in the end, it just comes down to which cover you like most. That's the variant cover thing. It's, it's a collectible thing. But yeah, if you could, if you then click on the kick, I mean, we you showed the Kickstarter, but yeah, that's the, that's what a variant cover is. Just a basically a different style artwork for the cover. Now and is, go ahead. a lot of times, comic book artists they they will hire a different people to do their variant covers. That's not my case. I drew everything. I wrote everything. Literally everything's by me. The website, everything. I do everything. You understand? I understand. Now, is the secondary market going to be as robust as Isom's secondary market? <laughs> um, Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, what about I, I that? People are losing wish. their shit on that, man. That's a, it, It's hard not to beat that. Dude, what's the that. latest on that guy? What's the latest? Yeah, what's the latest? Well, he had a pretty he had a pretty successful launch of his uh his Justice League ripoff comic Alpha Core yesterday but spelled <laughs> wrong. It's spelled blackly the title. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Like, like a core like an army core C O R P S. He spelled it Alpha Core like he, it's a it's a paramilitary group of like superheroes. He spelled it oh. Alpha C O R E. This idiot. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, it's right. Oh no, that's uh, really bad. That hit like five hundred thousand or six hundred thousand. It was written by someone else though, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh wait, he doesn't write his own shit. No, he's paying. Uh, he's paying like established writers who got canceled uh, to write his his fanfics in his universe. He still writes. He still writes his main comic. Uh, now you, you, one of the funniest things I've ever heard that you did, Dig, is that you hired a fifth grade high school teacher <laughs> to grade his story or something, right? That's what you did, right? Yeah, she's a uh, friend of mine. It's not my girlfriend. It's somebody else. I asked her to read it because she's like an English teacher and she teaches story writing every year for 30 years. So she grades like kids who, you know, some are good and some are dog shit. And she said that's uh she said Isom was worse than dog shit. So. <laughs> Wait, for real? So that what was age she gave her? Uh, this, the Isom script? She said it's horrible. She's like, it's just horrible. It's horrible. It, he's doing a lot of things that I tell the kids not to do, like to be continued to end their story and there's just no reason there's no reason for him to do, to do anything he's got no cohesive story structure there's no character motivation it's just holy shit. awful now what's going on with holy riley shit. and the uh case down there I, I talked to him recently but i didn't talk to him about that i don't know if you know anything about it um but eric july tried to put a felony case uh on riley for taping money to his door which um oh yeah oh yeah yeah i heard about that it's, one too uh, i think i think gator said that we were going to be in big trouble yeah. for that one yeah. if i gator remember did, gator correctly. Did say that. y'all are going to the big house <laughs> yeah uh, if me, they better separate us man the last <laughs> if the cops throw me and riley in prison they better keep us in different prisons i think not even different wings yeah, uh i think the uh we we FOIA'd the the call that Eric July made to the police to tell them about the uh, to tell them about the felonious uh, money taping the the felonious money play that was happening on his his warehouse, and I think the police just laughed at him. They sent about five cops out to take a statement and to collect the forty one dollars. Um, but I haven't heard. Now they could be putting together a task force That's or true. something. Interstate um, task force to swarm down. Yeah. That's yeah, true. they wouldn't let us know. It could be going all the way up to the FBI. Mm. I know I know the people mm. who hate me and Riley are pretty smart. So uh, if they say we're in trouble, then we're in trouble. <laughs> but I haven't heard <laughs> about it since. Yeah, and Gators convinced Vito is involved somehow. He said he, he was convinced Vito put this guy up to sending the email. Uh, He's got a hunch. He's got a hunch. Uh, well, you know, those, those, uh, those body pillows – have a secret way they communicate so perhaps skater's body pillow heard from Vito's body pillow that something is in the works and Vito's body pillow is going to turn on him and go state's witness uh and bring the hammer down it's really hard to it's hard to know the waifus are communicating now what in the world uh well that might be all she wrote for Vito if that's the case I, hopefully that's not uh he's he's the fall guy just i just want to say it here he's we're pinning it on him we're pinning all this on Vito for starting it all <laughs> well, all the felonious that. uh criminal harassment that we're doing by making fun of eric july's arm hair that's all going to be on Vito when all is said and done and i'm going to get away with it i have a prediction that i'll make on this show i'm definitely getting away with it oh, Vito yeah. Patsy. uh where, do, where does your show air by the way and what times uh mine is uh what do we do sunday uh, 
I don't know. It kind of comes out whenever I sober up on Monday morning. Um, <laughs> biggest problem is Friday at 6. <laughs> Friday 6 uh, the, Dick, the Dick Show. Patreon.com slash The Dick Show. Go after you support uh, Butch Killigan. Come to my show and see what we're doing. See what That's so doing. nice. <laughs> now, what about uh, you, Sven? Are you doing any streaming and stuff like that recently? or? Well, you can, I guess, on YouTube because of the strike. Uh, but you here's the thing: I, I've been, I've been uh, simulcasting to Rumble as well. I send you that link. This Rumble is so confusing. I feel like I, I might have made like six channels, but the one that I send you is the right ones. If you could put that in the description, people will be able to find it. Sure. So Rumble, right now, I'm streaming on a YouTube burner account that it was thankfully uh, we set up at some point. Uh, hopefully, we're gonna get the sec the, the the main channel back at at some point as well. We always stream to youtube and then immediately uh acts all the vod stuff and then gets uploaded to svenstoffels.com now i recommend everybody watch sven streams which is uh is the stream that we do we try to do it usually on like sundays 1 p.m est but it defers so subscribe to the mailing list that we have and you'll get notified whenever we go live very cool uh when is your strike up right. on youtube uh I think it's it's gonna be this at the end of this week. It's gonna be up, hopefully. I think so. That's but so then fun, it's though. like then you have an active strike, and then I'm, I, I usually yeah. I don't stream because I don't want to compromise the channel because that is like, listen, for me this is a lot, guys. You know, I'm just a small player in this game, but I have like a 30k or something, 25k on that one. So I'm gonna keep that one safe. So we're gonna be streaming to the alternate channel. So just to be safe, go to svenstoffels.com. We're always live on svenstoffels.com slash live Sundays, 1 p.m. EST, and then subscribe to the mailing list to get notified. All right, I'm putting the Rumble the channel up there too. Uh, go ahead, finish your thought. No, that's just a way to do it right now. Just just to have your own hub. I think we need to decentralize the internet. We can still use all these streaming platforms for our means but you need to have your own little hub your own little website that they can't fuck with that's basically what i've learned over the years yeah that's not a bad strategy i have to say uh it's although, an okay strategy yeah well it's the best you can do uh these days i appreciate you being on the show is there anything i left out i appreciate you too mr masterson uh is there anything i left out here that you want to say here uh, at the end no i just want to reiterate everybody if you want to fight the clines Yes, I go support Butch Gillian. <laughs> I can't. Butch Gillian. <laughs> uh, and, and Dick, I'd love to be on your show. Let's set it yeah. up. Call it Sunday. Call it Sunday at like, I don't know, like 1 p.m. because I'll, I'll send it to you. That'd be great. All right. We can fight I'll the Klein can. and Eric July together. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> Listen, dude, whoever you need me to fight, I'll fucking fight tooth and nail. I'm I'll fighting half the independent uh, right Griftosphere right now. So I could use nice. all the help I can, all the help I can get. I'm on board, dude. I'm right there with you. And thank you so much, <laughs> Ethan, you, for having me on for the second time. Many more times to come. Thank you so much, Ralph Males. I appreciate Peace that. Up. Sven Stoffel's here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Masterson, as well, sir. Yeah, have a good one, buddy. All right, yeah, See, See you guys. Peace. What's <laughs> up? See you guys later. Now, round of applause for those two guys. ButchKilligan.com if you want to support the project. Now, that was fun. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.